Welcome to our seventh podcast of our Unit 1. We are almost done. Quit cheering. We can hear you now. So I'm on page 20, and we're going to talk a little bit about density, and this will be a short one. Density, the definition, is just a ratio of mass per volume. What does that mean? In plain words, really how tightly packed or how much is matter crammed into a small space? Because look at what you have, the mass per unit formula. Okay, so, excuse me, mass per unit volume. So what is the formula for density? Density then is just like it says, the mass per volume. Typically, if you have a density problem, you're going to list out, okay, I have an object. This object has a mass of 15 grams. The object occupies a space of a volume of 3, let's say, milliliters. We're going to be talking about a liquid. What is its density? Take your formula, density, plug in your mass, 15, divided by your 3. Look at units don't cancel. So what is 15 divided by 3? You would say that it's 5 grams per milliliter. Density has two units. So if you're having to solve for density, you're just going to use the density formula. So write yourself a note. Use formula if it asks for density. If you asked for density. Okay, when we talk about those um, setting up the problems, so if number one says solve for density, you know you're going to use the density formula. Couple side notes for density. Um, I would know, write it down, put it in the memory bank, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Very, very, very important fact. We're going to be using this throughout the year. There's an assumption we know this. So density has or density of water is one gram. Remember, it's an intensive property. Pure water's density is always the same. Another fact that's good to know: we get um, we use cubic volume. And we also use liquid volume, depending on what it is. There is a relationship. One cubic centimeter is equivalent to one milliliter. When we're doing dimensional analysis, this comes in very, 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 very useful. It's a way to get from a liquid volume to a solid volume. This is something you need to know. Put it also in that memory bank. OK, let's just work some samples. So I have this, though. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per milliliter. What's the volume? Well, look at here. This time I'm looking for volume, not density. My hint, you could still use the density formula. But what happens is if you use density and we plug it in and I have the mass and you say, I don't know my volume, you guys make mistakes, silly algebra mistakes sol solving for volume because you need to cross multiply and then divide. What I think is easier is if it's used, if it gives you a density, let's use this as a dimensional analysis problem. So look at what we, problem one. Okay, what are you solving for? What is volume? Okay, what do I, what am I being given? Look at your given is the mass, 15.5 grams. Okay, do I have a conversion factor? Yes, I know that 19.3 grams is equivalent to one milliliter. That's what this says, 19.3 grams per one milliliter. It's a conversion factor. So when you set it up for the dimensional analysis, there's my grams. So if I have grams on top, I'm going to put grams on the bottom. Grams is equivalent to one mil milliliter. So this is telling you that you're going to have to divide the 15.5 grams divided by the 19.3 grams, which we would have done here if we had taken the time to cross multiply times x equals 15.5, divide both sides by 19.3, divided by 19.3. Look at what we're doing. Taking 15.5 divided by 19.3. Look at what we're doing. Take 15.5 divided by 19.3. Grams cancel. So in one step, we have solved for it versus having to do the algebra of setting up your problem. So you would get 0 0.0803 milliliters. So if they give you a density, you can use it to solve 
using dimensional analysis. Let's look at the next sample. Okay, piece of metal. This has given me a mass. It's placed in a 50 mil graduated cylinder. Look what the water does. It rises from 20 to 41 milliliters. Look what I'm looking for. Okay, first thing, if the question is asking, what is density? This is telling me I'm going to use the density formula. So let's write down what I know. Well, I was given a mass of 147 grams. Do I know something else? Okay, this 50 mil graduate cylinder. So let's picture it. I have it with my water right here. It's at 20 milliliters. Plop in a rock. Plop. What's going to happen to it? Well, it's going to make it rise up. Why does it rise up? Because this rock takes volume. How much space does it take up? Look at the difference. So the volume is going to be the 41 milliliters minus the 20 milliliters. So the volume is 21 milliliters, how much space it takes up. Okay, so part three, sometimes usually it's conversion factor, but this is saying, I'm not going to convert, I'm just going to use the density formula. That's the formula I'm going to use. Step four says plug it in now, so 147 grams for 21 milliliters. So my density, we don't leave things in fractions, the density to two significant figures would be seven, look at your units, grams per milliliter. So if it asks for density, use the density formula. If it gives you a density, then you can set it up as a dimensional analysis. Use the density as a conversion factor. Okay, so let's look at this. Hmm, so I have a model boat has a mass of 130 grams. What's the minimum volume? So look what I'm asking for. What are you looking for? What is volume? What has it given me? Well, it's given me 1,300 grams. And so I, I want to look for a volume. What do I know? Look at my hint. Well, I know the water has one gram per one milliliter. Because remember the density of water? we said is a gram per milliliter. That means one gram is equivalent to one milliliter. Well, but look at what I wanted. I want it in cubic centimeter. It's like, oh, but wait. I know that one milliliter is also equivalent to one cubic centimeter because Mrs. Mahoney said that's a good thing to know. So now we can set it up. So 1,300 grams. So I know for every one gram a gram a liter, hmm, that's not right, one every one gram, I will have one milliliter, but it asks for a solid volume because it's a boat, but I can transfer from a milliliter to a cubic centimeter, and we could put these as 1.0. This is an exact, they're exactly equal, so I'm not going to let those significant figures. So it has to be then 1,300 milliliters. You would just then say, well, anything larger than this is going to float. And if you look at big boats, that's what they're doing. They actually take a lot of mass, but they expand the boats. That's why the boats are so big. And then they do also are having some air in there that's keeping them afloat. But a lot of it's because the volume is so large that it's decreasing the density of them. Okay, so we want you to do the last problem. Okay, so we want you to do the last problem on page 20. Here are some hints for number 20. First, you're going to have to solve for volume. What's your formula for volume? Length times width times height. Okay, and then look at, you're solving for the mass. It gives you a density. My hint, I would use it as a dimensional analysis once you get your volume. And we will see you on Monday then. Have a good weekend.